What's up, guys? It's Mike, and this week we're going to do a little something different. Uh, we're going to start out by playing a little clip from behind the scenes of last week's episode, episode 19 with Lisa Varga. Joe Gatto and Greg Oliver were sitting in. We put this up on Patreon for our Patreon supporters. Um, sometimes we just like to roll, roll tape before we start the show, and we put that up on Patreon. Um, you know, a little behind the scenes for people who support the show. You can find our Patreon link off of our website, and thank you for your support. After that, we're going to move into one of my favorite episodes of all time. You might have heard it. If you're a Pizza Beer Revolution fan, this is an oldie but a goodie. The NFL season started yesterday, so why not give you a little uh, Phil Villa piano, Oakland Raiders legend, Super Bowl champion, Pro Bowler. It was one of the greatest episodes of all time. If you like the NFL, if you like football, if you like storytelling, this one's great. We hope you enjoy it, and we will uh, be back next week. Hi, I'm Lisa Varga. I'm an actress, a host. Uh, I love sports. I love entertainment. And you are listening to PBR Podcast. That was that was very good. It wasn't bad, right? Sure, no. Do, no. do you want me to do it over? I think you should do it again, though. <laughs> Let's do it this time with a little bit more, a little bit more energy. Come do you at it with a little more, more information. I'm, I'm, uh, no. I don't know what I'm supposed to say. <laughs> no, I, I, I think you should just come at it with like a little bit more of, uh, give it a little bit more Varga, a little bit Lisa. I think we're all feeling that. <laughs> more Varga, okay. more Varga, less Lisa. Lisa. Mm-hmm. More Varga, less, less, Lisa. Lisa. less Lisa. Nobody likes Lisa. No, no, no. But no. the Varga, no. everybody's no. about the Varga. You know what I mean? <laughs> Lisa's was a, that enough to say though, or is it was probably just, too much? Okay. It was probably too much. <laughs> it was just too look much. at the camera and <laughs> wink. That's it. it. <laughs> Done. <laughs> That's all we need. Oh, it's resting That's on my it. belly. <laughs> no, it was actually great. <laughs> all right. Well, you, what's up? Was that our, was that our cold open? <laughs> <laughs> no, it was good. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You could do it one more time though, just so I have. Okay. Not was, you, her. Oh, me. You want me to do it? No, no. Hi, I'm Lisa <laughs> Varga. What? Oh, that'd no, be great. Do it. it doesn't make sense, but I do it. Well, I'm Lisa Varga. You kind of look similar. I am Lisa Varga. <laughs> <laughs> they're going right? to see You guys could this. be, you're the next twins movie. It, Danny oh. DeVito, do me a favor. right? You, you say, hi, I'm Joe Gatto. <laughs> you say, hi, I'm Joe Gatto. Hi, I'm Joe Gatto. And I'm Lisa Varga. And you're listening to PBR Podcast. <laughs> How's that? That was good. Right. That was a good one. This it's going to confuse everyone. Why are you sitting like that? Nobody can see me. <laughs> I, I don't have a camera. Uh, I can rest the oh. mic on my belly. Mm. It's great. You can take it off the stand if no, you I want. I like this. It's good, man. Look. I like to take this uncut stuff and put it up on Patreon for our Patreon supporters. Oh, of course. I mean, we yeah. love Patreon. Is there, Patreon. Any, is there anything you want to say to... Now, this is a select few of people that, you know, support. Yeah. These are the people. These are the creme de la creme of people that listen to our, part of our posse. Right. We like to thank you for that, of course. And everybody on Patreon. Uh... I'll tell you a secret that no one else knows. I peed the bed till I was 14. <laughs> now they know it, and nobody, don't tell anyone. I'm trusting you. Right. Lisa, would you like to share any secrets? About Maybe peeing about- my bed? <laughs> no, I don't, I don't remember ever peeing my bed. Did you, really? Did, did my you brother the- peed in my closet, though, and he's going to love to Oh, nice. But he won't hear that because he's not a Patreon supporter, but he could if he went to pbrpodcast.com and clicked on that link. Go to pbrpodcast.com and click on the link. There you go. Right. Greg not only pees his bed <laughs> regularly, but he robs ice cream stores, but that was a whole episode ago. <laughs> it was the last episode. <laughs> but I, I had a pee alarm in my bed. What? I peed in my bed till I, I don't know how old I was, but I'm old enough to remember that I had this like sheet of metal <laughs> under the <laughs> under the sheet that like when I a water on, heater breaks. <laughs> no, no, if you peed, that was like a tinfoil thing. Yeah, and yeah. if I peed in my bed, this loud alarm would wake me up because I would just do it in my sleep. Did you win, oh, do you man. remember that? Like when you every time you peed your bed, you dreamt that you were peeing. Yes. Always. And now That's I still dream that I'm peeing and I wake I up and I like, wake up in a fucking panic. Shit. And then nothing's I wake happening. up in a panic. Yes. I look at my wife. I'm like, is everything dry? Yeah. yeah. No, last night this happened to me. It's <laughs> weird. It doesn't, it doesn't happen a lot, but once in a while I'm like, oh my, I can't believe I'm peeing again. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I we might the, as well round table it. Do you pee as well? I have not. No. No. Never when you in your life. <laughs> Maybe when I was a little, little, little. Yeah. But do you dream that you peed? <laughs> no. No. You just want to try. You tr- you're worried about what the ladies are going to think of you. No, right I now. swear to you. you look like I'll tell you a lying. pee story in college. Yeah. A pee story in college. Give it to me because I want you to get real. Okay, I'm going to get real right <laughs> now. <laughs> this Joe. is for Patreon. We don't play around on Patreon. <laughs> yeah. is this, okay, uh, you want me to just yeah. for Patreon? Yeah, but so get as real as you can get. All right, long story short, all my buddies all through college have a piss story. One pissed in the drawer, one, <laughs> one pissed can, in his. Uh, can go- you say urinate? Lisa Vargas at the yes. table. Okay, like, one pissed in the drawer, one pissed. Vargas, cool. Thank you. One Lisa's at the table. You want this story or not? <laughs> it's a piss story. I do. Okay. So, all through college. All right, so I muted him. Is there, you guys, what do you think? We Michael, should? please. I have to answer. Uh, I'm getting uh, urinated. Uh, I mean pissed. <laughs> <laughs> 
So everyone has pissed somewhere. My buddy pissed on a computer. My buddy yeah. pissed in his girlfriend's uh, roommate's sock draw okay. or underwear draw <laughs> at her college. Everyone has pissed story except me. Uh, no, don't, this is the last couple of days. We're in our apartment. The only seniors left because uh, we're going to graduate. So only seniors on campus. We go out. We get hammered. Apparently, I wake up in the middle of the night, walk up to the front door. We didn't have like a, a knob. It was like a, a handle like that, like the one like this. Yes. And I pissed all over the shelves next to the door. And then I hit that doorknob like it was the flush and walked back <laughs> to my bed. And my, and my roommate Brian and his chick Katie were at the, 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 the kitchen table. And they just watched me the whole thing. And the next morning, like, you got up, walked to the corner by where the table, where the Door meets the shelves, and you pissed did all you over it. Did you sleepwalk, or did you... Were you <laughs> drunk, drunk, probably drunk, sleepwalk. Muck. Our grandfather I don't sleepwalk, has the so. best pee story ever. My grandmother used to have <laughs> afternoon tea. This is back in 19, you know, like the early 50s, right? They used to have afternoon tea, my grandmother, on Sundays. And my grandfather used to go out with his brothers on what are Saturday we, are nights. Are we British now? <laughs> they had like an afternoon tea. They had like a, they had a, mozza, they had a mozzarella sandwich. Okay. So, that's yeah. right. that's so they're at the house and everybody's there all proper. And they're all just talking to a bunch of ladies. And my grandfather comes down through the living room. And he's just in his underwear. And he's got, he walks over <laughs> and he raises, he lifts the seat cushion, thinking it's the toilet, to a chair. Takes out his Johnson peas. And all the women yell. And he goes... And he looks and sees them and finishes. <laughs> and it goes back upstairs. Wow. There's no getting that out. Is no. it? Yeah, you gotta, that couch is <laughs> ruined. Yeah. In, in college, uh, I had a roommate, Matty Ramstead, oh, yeah. who you remember. Uh, we were all sitting around, and he came stumbling out of his room, probably like Derek, uh, Derek's story. Maybe he was, is imbibed a little too much alcohol. And uh, he opened the refrigerator. And peed right oh. in the roof. A, a, a lot of people packed. have done that, yeah. though. That's not like I've heard that before. I have never heard that. Really? Somebody peed in a refrigerator. Open right the fridge and pee in it. I haven't, but people have. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's got you a You haven't friend. done any of this, right? I know. I'm a shelf guy. I'm well, a shelf and doorknob guy. <laughs> we are clearly have an advantage when it comes to you about being able to to pee on things. Yes. Right. You right. Do. Yes. So right. I'm sorry about that. I am sorry. And you know what? I would love to write my name in the snow. You can't do it. And I can't. Well, you can. <laughs> you can. They actually make a product. A lot of they, this. They, so they, they do make a product that it like straps to your area and then has. Are uh, you kidding like, me? No, yeah. it's a funnel. So you can pee in the woods. I think this is This a, is a true story. I, I I've think, been camping this summer. I think we've hit enough. I, right, so, know, <laughs> I, I am dominated by, by the way, we're because we're talking about pee a little right. too much. Yeah, All right, it. so you know what? Let's stop with the peeing. And we're playing just, what's in the box later. Just hey, yeah. <laughs> let's just thank let's thank the Patreon supporters. We just pissed all over you. And yes. thank you for supporting thank you so us. Much, right? Patreon. And now yeah. I want you all to tweet. At, uh, at Lisa Varga, your pee story. Yes. Mm-hmm. At, at Lisa Varga. At yes. the, uh, the, the Lisa, Lisa Varga. Oh, You're she's like a you, the, oh, the e. Derek T. Who's, who's regular at Lisa Varga? Is Some that like a nemesis? Some girl that's also a blonde. We look very similar. And she's actually tweeted me before and said, so many people, I love this. I mean, she has like maybe a couple hundred followers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And a few times this has come up and people have tweeted her. And she said, this has happened quite a few times. But well, I don't mind it at all. Well, I'm how like, about well. this? How about this? Uh, all of the PBR posse, our Patreon supporters, thank Thank you and uh, at Lisa Varga hashtag eggs. I want you to throw <laughs> digital <laughs> eggs at the wrong Lisa Varga right. and then follow the Lisa Varga. Yes. The Lisa Varga. All That's right. right, then we peed. Let's start the episode. <laughs> here we go. Let's do it. Here we go. Okay, I am Phil Villapiano. I'm here with the Pizza Beer Revolution, and we're gonna tear it up Raider style. Hit it. What's up, everybody? Pizza Beer Revolution, Mike Polano, Chris Apolito, Joe Maffei, and sitting on the B-side, we have a very special guest, four-time Pro Bowler, Super Bowl champion, Mr. Phil Villapiano. Yeah, welcome. Thank you, guys. What a nice song. I like like that song. Do you you hear that beautiful voice in that song? I did. That's the lovely and talented Nikki uh, Ippolito. That's right over here. Somewhere over there. Woohoo! She can sing, man. I I like that whole thing. (laughs) Me too. Oh, your head started bobbing at the same time. (laughs) (laughs) We had three bobbleheads going. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> That's what we need. Pizza beer revolution yeah. bobblehead. Yeah. Have you ever had a bobblehead of you made? Because no, no, is. no. I never hit that status. Thank you. That's got to be big time, man. I think. So wait, it's like Pro Bowl then bobblehead. Is that what you're telling <laughs> me? Like that. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, I, I got a Super Bowl ring, but never a bobblehead. Uh, that's funny. You know, uh, to bring up the Super Bowl ring. Uh, everybody that uh, we had spoken to about you coming on the show, the big question was, do you think he'll bring the Super Bowl ring? Mm, th- and yeah. then you you brought it. So I brought it. Whoa. Thank you so much. You know, I, I like whenever I go and, uh, you know, 
I had a feeling I might find some Raider fans here today. So uh, <laughs> oh, I bought a Super Bowl wow. ring. For him. I was okay. going to say the second question was, do you think you'll let me touch it? Oh there it is, right there <laughs> yeah, in my show hand. Show the camera. Wow. Uh, can we take a picture of that? Yeah. That's uh, that's pretty amazing. That's a that's a Super Bowl. How, can you ever say in your life? Can I pass it around? Is that Absolutely, okay? man. That's that, what it's for. That you've ever touched a Super Bowl ring? Wow. That's pretty awesome. Thank you so and much wow. uh, for that coming by. Is, that particular ring is the year they went from looking like big college rings okay. to professional rings. And ever since then, every team has tried to outdo that one. Right. And, and they have. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you look at, you look at uh, I saw the Baltimore Ravens ring a couple of days ago. I was at Joe Namath's tournament a couple of days ago. We had the Baltimore Ravens ring I saw. I saw, well, I naturally know what the Raider rings look like. Ted, yeah. Ted Hendricks had his, the third one on. Oh, that's cool. And, uh, Dallas Cowboys, ridiculous. Yeah, I can imagine. So, I mean, it became, really, became just extravagant. This is really beautiful. And, and they're, they're almost so big you can't wear them. I actually think, and because this is mine, man, I like it. But <laughs> yeah. this this is wearable. Anything bigger than this, it gets a little, yeah. a little. That's, it's a beautiful ring and, it, and it's heavy, and I, I can't believe that you know we got to touch it. What year is that Super Bowl? This is. Uh, the Super Bowl Eleven, which was the '76 season. That's but, the Vikings. But, Viking, Viking Raiders. Good yeah. for you. Yeah, yeah. Wow. yeah, well, yeah. You had a big play in that. Wasn't there a goal line play? Yeah, I had a good one. I had a yeah. good one. I, had, I, I can't had... wait to hear more about that. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> I I always like to talk about that game. That was a good one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I would think. <laughs> I would think that if you're talking to a Raider and you start talking about tackling him in the face and the <laughs> scrotum and things like that, I think Raiders like that kind yeah. of stuff. Yeah. Well, I, I watched your highlight reel and. and I gotta say, you you uh, if if you watch your highlight reel and watch last night's game between Pittsburgh and the Ravens, right? The way you played the game, and the way they got penalized for play, trying to play the game the way oh, you yeah. played it last night yeah. is, is it's, it's a mind blowing. Yeah, right? that kind of ruined all the momentum the Steelers had. Those two penalties on those two drives, and I don't think either one of them was avoidable. Right. You know, and I I'm totally, you know, I totally like the new rules. I thought somebody was going to get killed. Matter of fact, I, uh, John Madden, uh, we had a big party when George Bland had died. All the Raider guys showed up in Oakland to celebrate his life. And I'm sitting next to Madden, and he says, Phil, what do you think about the new um, safety rules? And I said, Coach, I like them. And he goes, you do? And he, he goes, I would have figured that you wouldn't have liked them. I said, Coach, somebody's going to die. Yeah. And they needed to yeah. happen. That game, and, and, and you can watch that game last night, that game is rough enough. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you don't need to stick your face into somebody's throat. Right. You know, we did all that stuff. It was okay. But it got worse. <laughs> you it, did it. It was, it was okay. Yeah, yeah but it was fine. getting worse. Right. You know, right. it was really getting worse. And I'm kind of happy. I think that uh, we, we got to protect them. But last night, um, I thought both of those hits were very legal. Yeah, me too. And they had to be hit. That guy goes in the end zone if you don't nail him the way he was nailed. Right. You know, and that's the way – Football's a tough game. We're going to see a lot more of that, though. It is. And thank you again for being here. And i, I got to yeah. introduce you formally. Not that you need any introduction, but we're here with the legendary Phil Villapiano. He's a former American football linebacker who played 13 seasons in the NFL. Wow. You were AFC defender, Defensive Rookie of the Year in 1971. Tell me if I'm wrong on any of these no, That's good. Keep this going. is from Wikipedia. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. All NFL. <laughs> 75, 76, all AFC from 72 through 76. You also played four Pro Bowls, and when you were a member of the Oakland Raiders, Super Bowl XI winning team, one of the fastest linebackers of the era. Phil specialized in making big plays, none bigger than his momentum-changing goal line tackle against the Minnesota Vikings in Super Bowl XI. Welcome. Thank you, guys. Thank you. This is <laughs> fun. Yeah. And I'm learning all about some good technology tonight. You yeah, guys are yeah. good. And I, I, the viewers out there want to see this little setup. This uh-huh. is cool. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. So listen, for I'm not I don't follow football much anymore like like Mike does. I don't think you follow it at all anymore, right? Or do you? Yeah, I'm, I'm not a you know big fan of it. So, but for me, the the, the best football ever played uh, was during the '70s when I grew up. Um, the Raiders were no- notoriously hard hitting, hard partying. Can you tell us what it was like to play back then? What was the atmosphere like? It was just. It was, Is it hard it to encapsulate like, that in one response? Well, you know, it's 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 something I it can. I don't think it could ever be duplicated, especially nowadays. And um, w- the things, you know, when you're not making a whole lot of money, yeah, but you're making somebody else a whole lot of money, yeah, you know, you you're pretty. You become, you know, you you, you just know it, and 
it like it, it, you know you become like this it, we're like we're like stars or something you know and we're not movie stars or anything but we have you know it was it was really fun to be out there i, mean, I want to say it was fun it wasn't as much a job and i don't i mean i would have done it for zero you know as long as somebody would have fed me but <laughs> um, we just um, we just went out there and had, to, had a great time we played more as a unit People didn't get traded as much. You know, you like with Al Davis, if you're winning, everybody's on the same team. Matter of yeah. fact, we had we won the AFC West eight years in a row, and nobody got traded. Right. And we lost one year. Seattle comes down and beats us. About 10 guys get traded that year, you know. Oh. So um, we – it was kind of crazy. But, but I'm thinking it was more fun. And when I, when I was a kid, all I wanted to do was be a, a football player, you know, high school – then I want to be a college player. Then I want to be a pro player. And, I, and I, you know, when you achieve your dream and it's, like, fun every day, great guys, mm -hmm. great atmosphere, you know, you can't do too much wrong, especially in Oakland, every, you know. Yeah. Yeah. It was just – it was an unbelievable, you know, um, you know, nine years that I had that was like I was a, a big kid. Yeah. doesn't sound like they had way more heart back then. I was just going to say, like, it sounded like you had more heart, more fun. I feel like the whole game, and this is just my uneducated perspective of it, is it's been too commercialized. It's too packaged. Big business. It felt yeah, it genuine is. back then. It yeah, felt well, like. I think, I think you're absolutely right, and, and, it, and it was more genuine. And, and you, you, know, you, you loved your teammates, and you loved your owners, and you loved your coaches. And nowadays, I don't see a lot of that. As a matter of fact, I, I, this is a crazy one. I never thought about it, and maybe you guys didn't either. But with this free agency now, I went back out to Oakland about three years ago, and they built this beautiful practice facility. I'm telling you, gorgeous. Everything in the world is in this thing. Plus, they feed the guys three meals a day. The, everything is done. They've got masseuses in there. They've got doctors. They've got 24 hours. Everything. And I'm looking, I'm looking at this guy. His name is Al Locasell. It was underneath Al Davis. And I said, Al, are you kidding me with this facility? Right. He goes, Phil. If we don't do it, they're not coming here. Don't go somewhere else. And you didn't have that at all. You didn't. Yeah. We had a. Are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> our practice field, oh, it was it was garbage. Really? And uh, I mean, our locker room was uh, this. Uh, every, our lockers were the size of a trunk. You know, it was. Oh man. It was nothing. You know, I mean, these guys got showers, individual, beautiful showers. We yeah. had. One big room, you yeah. know, like cattle would be right. in there, you know. So yeah, it's totally changed. But you do that for the free agency because, you know, you know, if you're deciding where you want to go and somebody's going to offer you a lot of money plus a gorgeous place plus three meals a day, yeah, right. I, I'm thinking about going there. It's like That's the same way that uh, colleges are trying to lure sure. players, sure. right, with all these other kind of fringe benefits, right? Yeah. Sure. I mean, the colleges are right in there, and you know, it's kind of. Interesting how the NCAA is talking about paying the players. Yeah. Well, why not? You know, it might stop a lot of the uh, the stuff they're doing on the side. But but I think, hey, if, if somebody's making money off you, you should be making some money too. Now, you you talked earlier about um, you know wanting to be a high school player than a college player than a pro player, and I like I I've had I've been fortunate enough to talk to some pro athletes in different sports, and I always kind of go back to this question. At what point did you know that you could do it, that you were good enough to be a professional? There's got to be a point in the chain where you're <laughs> like, I, I know I'm... Really, I'm really good question. And my whole thing was one season at a time. And I remember when I went to Bowling Green, and I told my father, I said, Dad, there's 110 guys going out for this freshman team. But I'm a scholarship guy. But you don't even know you're a scholarship guy. You're so afraid. And the guys had the giant arms and... You know, and I'm like, holy <laughs> mako, look at these guys. And I'm, you know, I weighed like 185. And it, it, the, I went out there as a fullback and linebacker. So now we're having the, the very first meeting. And the guy says, okay, all, you know, linebackers over here, all defensive tackles over here, all defensive ends over here. And the skinny guys went over to the defensive end line. That's where I went. They didn't even know I was a linebacker. <laughs> so I played four years of defensive end just because I was skinny. And I got, you know, yeah. then when I got, in the, I, you know, I probably would have been a little bit better off when I went on the Raiders if I played a little linebacker, but I did in high school. But so I, when I was a senior, um, I got invited to the blue gray game. And that's, that was, you know, the North played the South. 
And when I got invited to that game, I started saying, whoa. You know, and then yeah. when I went down there and played, and I made about 25 tackles that night, and that was like a, a big one. And then I went back to Bowling Green, and the next day I, I got a call from the Senior Bowl committee. Can you come, you know, to the Senior Bowl, which was nice. run, run by the pros? And then and then we had the uh, the Denver Bronco coaches. Lou Saban was the head coach. I had this linebacker coach. His name was Fitzgerald. And he said, Phil, you could play. And I'm like, yeah. So how about this? Opening kickoff of the senior ball. I'm running down on the kickoff. I'm going to hit the wedge. A guy sticks up his elbow, hits me right in the eye. So I, I'm i not sure I don't leave the field. I mean, you got one shot at this, yeah, right? right. So I come off the field. My eye is swollen shut. <laughs> the guy looks at me and goes, what happened? I said, I ran into this guy's elbow. He says, <laughs> well, Phil, we got no backups. I said, yeah. no, I ain't coming out. Are you kidding me? Yeah. So I played a game with one eye, and then I'm coming off the field. And this one guy comes over to me and says, nice game, Philip." And I'm like, who's this guy? And then I, I, I got around, and uh, the, the, the uh, Bronco coaches were over there. And one of the guys says, you know who that was? I said, no. I says, that's Al Davis. Oh, oh. like, holy mackerel, Al Davis said hello to me. And then, uh, but, the, you know, Bowling Green's right near Cleveland. So the Browns were at my, a lot of my practices. Lions were at a lot of my practices. Mm-hmm. Detroit's Bengals. Never, Raiders. never met a Raider. Right. And then they come draft day, which was only another week. The draft used to be back in January. And it was like another week later. I'm a Raider. And it was oh, second round, cool. 1971. Is that what yeah. that was? Yeah. Yep. yep. Amazing. Yeah. And, you know, it was really, that was the funniest thing. So, uh, you know, you, you hear about these stories, but you don't never, you don't know. So you get drafted. I think the draft was like um, a Tuesday. And they said, um, pack your bags. <laughs> you, we, you, you, we want you at Detroit Airport tomorrow morning at nine o'clock. Just take a cab. We'll pay. I'm like, what? That's it. I, that was about the end of my school. Oh, you know? yeah. For it was January on. I was out like in Oakland. They, they were flying me back and forth, you know. And, oh, this is wow. January of your senior year, Bowling yeah. Green. Yeah, senior year. Which you, so you finished out in Oakland. Yeah. That, well, right? yeah, I, I pretty much. I <laughs> yeah, pretty yeah. much didn't go to class anymore. That was that was funny. <laughs> but that's the way it is, and you because know, you get you, you got your dream, and here we yeah. go. Wow. Here we go. Talk about our lousy practice field. So now I go out there. I'm so psyched to play, and they've got this sod or grass, and then this where the sprinklers were were like three inches down below. Yeah. And I'm dropping back, and I sprained my ankle. Mm. My like my first day, I got a sprained ankle. Oh, like, oh, oh could no. you imagine? That's oh. that's kind of like what a high school, a bad high school field would be like. That's exactly. So right. you you're in the NFL at the time of I guess like right after or soon after the merger between the AFC and the NFC, right? Right, right. Like what? I think that was uh, 69 and I'm 71. So you're right after the merger, so it's yeah. really starting to catch steam at this time. And the M- So you're essentially groundbreaking in the building of the empire, which is the NFL, right? You were a part of that. Like, Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It? And it's real, it's real, and that's, that's a really fun part of it. As a matter of fact, I, I told you guys earlier, I was at Joe Namus, um, got found in at Beth Page on Wednesday. And the real cool thing, they got... Five golf courses. So Joe fills them all, right? And I don't, they'd probably make a million bucks in that one day. Right. But the Beth Page Black, where the pros play, the only ones that play on that are the huge sponsors right? and Joe's Super Bowl guys. So like you're talking about Emerson Boozer's on that field. Right. Matt Schnell's on that. I'm mean, on that field on that golf course. And all these old Jets are out there with these guys. And uh, that's class. Yeah, I like yeah, that. Yeah, you know, that's, yeah. But that's the way it was when I got in the NFL. It was a pecking order of, you know, the guys that have been around. Jim Otto, George right. Blanda. I don't even talk to those guys. You know, they, yeah. you, know you have to introduce yourself. And right. maybe they'll talk to you. Maybe they won't. But it was really, really a good old boys club. And you paid your dues, and when you're a rookie, you don't say a word. Matter of fact, um, playing up in Buffalo, my rookie year, and uh, I was getting a little fired up on the goal line, and I got a guy next to me. His name's Tony Klein, playing defensive end, and I'm yelling across to uh, the Bills quarterback to run over here. Come over here! I said, "Get over here!" <laughs> and this guy looked up and said, "Shut the f, f up!" You yeah. know, yeah, yeah. you know, you don't do that in the NFL because if they do come. You, yeah, you, you don't want them to come, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah. But I was, I was like, you know, getting fired up. So, but you, but you learn that from the older guys. Yeah. You know? yeah. And, and one of my, you know, couple of the greater guys that I'd love to watch was Ben Davidson. You know, 
six ten, three ten. Yeah. Wow. Monster. Like this guy. Joe yeah. Yeah, <laughs> Minus nine <laughs> inches. Yeah. A few inches shorter. Yeah. Only a little bit. But you know, you, you watch Big Ben, and you know, he, oh God, he made, he has a, when you went into the Raider office to go up the stairs to Al Davis's office, there is a picture of Ben right across Namus face. The, the helmet is over there. <laughs> it's there. And that's when he broke Joe's nose. Oh, you know, wow. and that was, that was a big play, you know. So, uh, you That's know, great. that was the stuff the Raiders just loved. You know? uh, I was going to ask you: Did the Raiders go out of their way, the Raiders administration, to seek guys that were just <laughs> ruthless? It, it seemed that way, but it was true. <laughs> you yeah, know, it, that's the way they liked it. And it, they, you know, and everybody, you got to have a you, you try to get the same mentality of players on your team. It makes it work a lot better. And we had that 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 mentality, and everybody. Thought alike. A matter of fact, you know, we have behind me. I got Jack Tatum, George Atkinson, Skip Thomas, and Willie Brown. Whew, yeah, those four guys. Tough guys. They knock your head off. You know, yeah. They call themselves the Soul Patrol, and that when and they were, you know, and those guys were taught by the guys that, you know, were there before me, like Nehemiah Wilson. You know, he's calling chicken skin. He was just yuck. He was just a, a <laughs> nasty, nasty person. Yeah. You know, but but a great guy, but he's just a nasty football player. And right. That's the way the, the Raiders liked it. Do you feel like their club is still like that? They still have that kind of uh, that aura, you know? I would love to say yes, but uh, I, I I was at the Jet Raider game last Sunday, and um, I don't think there's much left. Do you think I, you can? I, I you know yeah, Joe, that's right. right. I don't. That was my question. Who's I, able to play ball like that? You more? can. That, I wanted to ask you. It's like the way the way we kind of talked about it earlier before we started. But the way you played, you can't play like that today. No, you right? can't. You can't. But you know, if we saw the uh, Pittsburgh Raven game last night, and we talked a little bit about the hitting, but they are playing a great brand of football. And you know, you know, mostly the offense, you got to be somewhere under control. But how about? How about the Seattle Seahawks defense? They hit as hard as anybody I've ever seen. Sure. And the 49ers are right behind them. Those defenses are playing at a level that the, the rest of the NFL is not playing at. And I like the I think they compare with with us guys. But but even even hitting hard and playing fast and furious defense is still different in my eyes than than in your era. Like when you when you guys tackled somebody you know, I was joking with my card a little bit, but uh, you, you tackled by the face, the scrotum, the neck, head, chest, and breast area. <laughs> but, like, you tackled like you were – like it was a mission. And, and yeah. t- in today's game, it's, it's, it's not it's, like that. It's, What's the tribute? It's kind of like antiseptic now, right? It's yeah, kind of like homogenized. NFL-like. Like, back then it was scrappy. And Do you think the money has anything to do with it? I, I don't know. That's Maybe. really my question. Like, where's the difference come in? Is it, uh, you know, between the way you played or the way you wanted to hit? Was the – was – was it because you were building an empire and it was you were so hungry and you wanted to get to that level and now it's kind of like these guys know from a very young age that they're going to be put into this NFL and have masseuses mm-hmm. and three meals a day like you didn't have that so I guess is, was it a different mentality? Well, it might, it might have been, but I can't imagine anybody playing in the NFL didn't think like I thought. You know, you have to have this. You know, you have to be born wanting to be an NFL player. You have to play. And a pop Warner, like you want to be an NFL player, you just have to play football, like a like at a different level and and, and a different and a love. Now, once you get up there, I re- remember George Blanda was uh, he was twenty two years older than, than me. He was a rookie in nineteen forty nine when I was born, and I ended up being we was forty four years old. I'm on his team. Wow. Right? You're not going to have anybody like with that that right. that, yeah. that to teach you. Jim Otto was older. Uh, uh, Pete Banizak was older. Marv Hubbard was older. Fred Belitnikoff was older. Listen to these guys. How old were they? Up. You said 40s? Uh, yeah, they were all like uh, way that. upper 20s and 30s. You okay. Know? Yeah. And we had a bunch of those guys, which they don't have anymore. Yeah. You, you know, some of these teams, uh, you know, there's maybe maybe a quarterback that's been around eight years, you know? Sure. Look at them all. They're there. There's no, I, I see there's a lot of non locker room. You need locker room. Leadership, sure. You know, and um, a f- very good story that I said one. I would like to tell you it was um, when I was my ninth year in Oakland. I think I'm going to be there my whole career. So I get uh, I get traded over to Buffalo, and Chuck Knox is in Buffalo, and Chuck Knox is in a real veteran coach like John Madden was, and uh, he brings in Conrad Dobler, 
and Sherman Smith and Ron, Ron Jesse and Roosevelt Leakes and they brought in like nine, Frank Lewis from the Steelers is a great player. They brought in like nine guys all my age, which was 30, all right? 29, 30, 31. And he brought us all in and he says, guys, I get enough number one picks here. I don't want you guys to be starters. Some of you will. But what I want you to do is lead these guys because we got talent. And lo and behold, I told you before, we're 5-0 and that first year, and I'm drinking Tennessee cream now like it's crazy. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I was never 5. You know, only yeah. one year with the Raiders, we might have been 5-0, and you know, even though we had great records. That was fun. And it was fun because yeah. I was – they told me, Phil, we don't need for you to start. You need to play all four linebackers because they had no, no depth. Right. You know, and it was that, that was cool to be a part of that, yeah. that be a part of that team. Now, th there's an interesting story behind how you ended up in Buffalo, right? Chris, you want you want to touch upon that? From what <laughs> I understand, you had suggested. I feel like the gentleman's name is Chambliss. Uh, Cham yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that the last name? Bobby Chandler. It was a w Chandler. Okay. It was a wide receiver. Yeah. And you had suggested to Raiders management, hey, we need this guy. <laughs> Do you want to tell the rest of that story? Well, it wasn't quite like that. <laughs> I, I come on, I, I, uh, I'm back home. I'm working the shipping business in the offseason. Now, another thing we all knew we needed another job. You, retired, you, work, so. you worked another job aside from playing in the NFL. Oh, yeah, yeah. Everybody did? Well, if you were smart, you did because you're one, one knee away from yeah. having to find a job. So I we win the Super Bowl, meet a guy. We are playing golf together for a couple of days. He asked me, you know, uh, what I do in the off season. I said nothing. I lift weights. He goes, you want to learn something? I go, what do you got? He goes, I have ships. I said, I figure I got Aristotle and yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I go, I'm in. What do you got? Talk to me. He said, well, hey, we go back and forth to Europe. That's why we carried the Stella beer. So I get involved in the in the, in the shipping world in my eighth season. So I I played 13. So I had a job for my last five years. So I've come back in, in New Jersey one of those years, and um, I come back, you know went to St. Michael's the church. Come back, got my two kids. My wife says, "Hey Phil, I was on the phone. Like it's nine o'clock, it's six o'clock in the morning. I'm with, you know why is he on the phone with me?" So I yeah. grabbed it and he goes, "Hey Phil, can I ask you a question?" I go, "What?" He goes, "How's that knee?" I said, "Oh, my knee is good." He said, "What are you weighing?" I said, "Yeah, I'm like close to two thirty, man. I'm ready because I was actually playing in the middle in those days too." And I, I figured he was just asking me questions if I was, you know, mm -hmm. working out. Right. And he goes, but look, I could ask you something else. You, back in the Pro Bowl in 74, you played with this guy named Bobby Chandler from Buffalo. I said, yeah. <laughs> he goes, well, you know, Freddie, Freddie's gone. That was Blitnikoff just went to Canada. And he had a big problem with Al, so he leaves. Mm -hmm. Cliff, Cliff, he says, you know, we got a little problem with Cliff, too. So that's Cliff Branch. So we need a wide receiver. I said, well, oh, I got it. And then, yeah, Al. That guy's good. I think that guy would be good. I like him. His, the way he runs patterns. It was like Polinikov, and, and he's a good guy. He goes, but Phil, we can't make a mistake. You think he could be a real Raider? I said, yeah, but you're going to have to give up somebody for him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, it's you. So I got traded. So there's another one. There's another one. So no shoot. I get off the phone. Five minutes later, Chuck Knox, ding, ding, ding. Can you be in Buffalo tomorrow? Oh, and boom, and we man. started all over again. You know? That's great. So I had, I had great years, and uh, you know, my roommate up there was Conrad Dobler, and you talk about a sick guy. I said, <laughs> Conrad, he played for keeps, and uh, and you know, and we went up there, and I'm, 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 we're sitting around having beers one night after practice, and Reggie McKenzie's sitting there, and I, we called him the governor. I said, hey, Governor, why don't you guys win? <laughs> he goes, uh, what, do you, what do you mean? He goes. Why don't I said you got better players than the Raiders do? Why don't you win? He didn't even realize you had better players. That's how when winning, losing can just poison you. you know, yeah. Yeah. yeah, he didn't even know. Well, my, my and then, you know, and Knox told us what he wanted from us. We shared that with Reggie. You know, let's go. You know, and then we then we got revved up. Man, we had we had some. We went to the playoffs three years in a row. On the fourth year, we missed the playoffs, but it was fun. Fun. Uh, my fourth year up there. What was your reaction when he said, "All right, we're trading you"? <laughs> oh God! And then I were said, you heartbroken? I went, were you excited? I was destroyed. Yeah, I was Raider man. I, I was right. a Raider. I was a Raider man. Right. I, I, I couldn't think of playing for anybody else. But that's when you learn it's a business. Yeah, you know. And yeah, they, you're and a commodity, they, right? Yeah, and they had some really good young linebackers out there, and they just drafted Matt Millen, so they really didn't need me. You know, and 
This is 79? Yeah. What year is this? That was 79. 79. Yeah. And so Matt, Matt was a rookie. Him and Howie Long came in in 80, which All was right. my first year up there. So, so, so oh, oh, I was just saying it. So, I think I should be a little worried if these guys come to me and go, Well, who do you think would be good for PBR, Joe? <laughs> Remember that guy? How about that guy, Phil Villapiano? Remember him? Yeah. I think he'd be great in the organization. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Well, that, that would be, that'd be funny, though. I, I want you to call, call me up and tell me that happened, Joe. That'd be good to hear. Um, but, but, you know, the, people get traded in a lot of weird ways in the NFL. And, yeah. and the really, the reason that that happened the way it happened was another. Villa piano ism. We're playing golf. And there's like 16 of us. We could play anywhere we wanted out there in those days. And uh, we're playing golf. And uh, we come in, and the, and the golf pro standing there goes, You guys know you're going to Los Angeles? I'm like, what? Oh, wow. Here's Gene Upshaw, the captain oh. of the team right next to me. What are you talking about? Al Davis is on television right now, is telling the world. Oh, you're going. wow. So we could get out of here. So we used to throw dice. You know, in California, they throw dice. You play them like liars. Poker, okay. you know? Yeah. So we throw dice, we're drinking beers, and Dave Dalby's having a barbecue that night. So we go back to Dalby's barbecue, and the Oakland Tribune finds out where all the guys are, so they're called. And one guy after another gets on the phone, and I was the last guy, which made up me <laughs> have drank the most beer. So <laughs> uh, Dave New, this, my buddy Dave Newhouse gets on, gets on, and he says, Phil, what do you think about this? I said, Turk. Asshole, I, I can't stand it when he does. They think, I'm, going, I'm talking about Al Davis. Oh, no. How could he do this to the people of Oakland, to this city? <laughs> this is the greatest city to play football in. I can't stand it. I, I, it just drives me crazy. I never said I wouldn't <sighs> go. Right. Next yep, morning. Filipiano won't go. Oh, no. <laughs> sure, so media spins so it, right? my, my wife, I, I, we woke up, she says, oh, there, there you go, big mouth. We're <laughs> out of great. here. That's great. And back in those days, the two worst places to get traded, Green Bay and Buffalo. Uh, <laughs> you know? Really? Oh, wow. Well, there's no domes. They're, they're frozen. Yeah, 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 yeah. And oh. Warm weather, right? You're yeah. in Los Angeles. You're actually yeah. our second Buffalo Bill to be on the podcast. We had uh, the punter John Neese. Oh, Johnny. Good yeah. man. Good, yeah. Good player. Yeah. I want you to know, I, I helped Johnny get on. I, I called up there for him. And uh, yeah. his, his, um, his father was an NBA ref. Right, right, right. And so, you know, his father knew me. And he says, hey, my son's pretty good. So I. I pretended like I knew who he was. Mm, right, right. <laughs> hey, man, you got to take a look at this guy. He made the team. Yeah. He did very well. He tells it, it tells it very similar, too. Like you say, it's the worst, one of the worst places to play. Well, he played co his college ball, setting all of his records in Arizona, where it's perfect, yeah. no humidity, yeah. sunny all the time. Then he gets drafted and he goes to the Buffalo, where, the, you know, it's beautiful for one second, and all of a sudden the clouds oh, come sure. ripping in. Unbelievable. You know, you're trying to punt in that. And he was on a great Buffalo team. So they didn't even use the punter half the time. You come in the, <laughs> in the fourth quarter to kick a ball. Yeah. Um, well, Johnny's a great athlete, and he's yeah. got a nice, nice uh, great guy. studio right here. You in Red Bank, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Go exactly. get trained by him. I, I wanted to ask you a question about uh, – we, we have to talk about it, right? Chris and I talked about it today, and I think it's like – it's probably one of the most famous plays in all of NFL history, and you happen to be on the field for that play. The Immaculate Reception. Oh, yeah. Do yeah, we talk about that as a sore spot? Course, yeah. <laughs> you know, fun. like, you're going to punch Joe if we get too deep no, into it? Because <laughs> yeah, he no, looks no, like no, someone no. on that team. Yeah, no, that was, that, was, that was crazy, crazy play. <laughs> it was a crazy play, but it was, it was all, hey, we've had more fun with that play over the years. So it's almost like it's okay. You yeah, know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but at the time, it was not okay. Don't I you mean, feel like Franco kind of... Uh, he kind of like always leaves question of whether or not he actually caught it. Oh my! Is that God. on purpose? Did no, he catch it? no, 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 no. The, the, the one you want to hear is uh, Frenchy Fuqua. Okay. Um, I was at we. They asked me one year, Ray Mansfield, before he died, great center for the uh, Steelers. Said, "Phil, why don't you get ten Raiders, and we'll fly them all back here, and I'll have ten Steelers. We'll have a big uh, <laughs> golf outing, <laughs> and and you know, and and so we. Uh, I put I get together." You know, 10 of my boys, and he's got 10 of his. We got to Oakmont. We had a big day, and uh, Frenchy Fuqua, because we all came to town, decided that this was the night he was going to tell everybody if the ball hit him mm. oh. or hit Tatum. Oh, my. So we told Now, because it, back then there was, a, there was a rule. Right. If it went off a certain player, it wasn't eligible to be a deflection. Yeah, to be caught, caught to be intercepted. Offense to offense. Okay. Oh. It could have gone, gone from Tatum. To, to Franco, but it couldn't have gone from Fuqua to Franco, oh, okay. which is what we said and what I saw. I saw the ball hit 
Frenchie. So anyway, he's finally going to he's gonna tell it. And he gets up, and he, he, he's standing up, and he can't speak for a while because <laughs> he's going to tell everybody about the immaculate reception. And then he starts crying. No. Crying. Oh, really? And then he walks off. What? <laughs> yeah. I did that dirty bum. Uh, you know? It never comes uh, out. Oh, never. And I've seen now. I've seen that show about ten times. So he yeah. does it. He did. Nobody does it better than him. Oh, but, that's great. But I got invited out there last year. What was the fortieth anniversary? I saw I the was, clip of that. Yeah, that was a fun, yeah, fun, yeah. fun, fun weekend. And I was representing the Raiders, and we just had more fun out there. Franco and I become very good buddies over this. Matter of fact. Uh, at the name of thing, he was there the other night, but I had to fly out, so I had to leave early. They asked Franco to get up and talk about the Mac reception, and he goes, "You know, the greatest thing was that Villa Piano was covering me, so uh, I could get loose." You know, uh, but they said, "Where is he?" And I'm like, "Gone." You know, so I could we could have a lot of fun with that. But so I, I like to tell the story. You know, so Franco's a rookie, and in in, in the NFL when. Uh, a back this game yeah. you're talking about yeah, it's yeah, his first year. Well, this is the uh, championship game right yeah it was a it was playoff game right playoff so, game. so but he's a rookie i'm a second year guy but what you do is like if a guy's going to you know set up the block you automatically blitz and you just grab him you know you st- and you go right. like this so you don't have to cover the guy you know so anyway i got frank oh, i'm rustling i'm making it look good and then i just shove him and the guy starts running down the field and i'm like just out of nowhere and i'm, yeah, and I'm like What's this asshole running down the field for? <laughs> stop! I let you go, so stop. You know, that's yeah. what I'm thinking in my mind. Right. And then, but I'm looking back over here and I see Branch. I thought, boom, I'm gone. You know, over to help make yeah. the tackle. So then, when Tatum comes up and hits Frenchie, it goes right over my head. And here's Franco, which I like to say was loafing down the field <laughs> at the time. You know, trying to impress the coach for sure. next year or something. And I got to play on him. And then this McMakin hits me in the back of the legs. So we had a, you know, we had the uh, ball hitting Frenchie, yeah. right? Right. Instead of clipping, uh, you know, sure. we had clipping. clipping. And then with the recent camera work, right? We don't Franco, know if the ball touched the oh, ground. It touched the ground, oh. definitely. So, Franco, if you're listening. <laughs> <laughs> and he tells the story that he, he played for Paterno at Penn State, right? Yeah. And I guess Paterno was always like, you run down the field after yeah. a play. So, he, like, it snapped in his head. The ball was thrown. I'm going to run down the field, you know? So, he just started to run down the field, and it just yeah. right place, right time. But wow. you, don't, you don't think he caught You think it hit the ground? I will re- never tell. Ah. <laughs> he's going to start crying. Oh. I'm going to cry. Oh, I'm going to leave. <laughs> That's yeah. great. But anyway, oh yeah, it was crazy. It's crazy. So Frenchie started crying again last year at the uh, yeah. at the big thing we had out there. They had the big news conference, and I was representing the Raiders. And the funniest thing, the way the way to it, it, this is really cool. They have the guard, okay? So the guard says he's the first guy. Up. I think it was John Cole, right? So he goes, "If it wasn't for me." The macro reception <laughs> would have never happened. <laughs> He's a guard. So funny. Right, I'm listening. He, right. he, he, got goes, beat. he got beat. He goes, right? yeah, well, if <laughs> I didn't trip and let Otis Sistrunk get through there, Bradshaw would have never rolled out around the end right, right, right. and it would have never thrown the ball <laughs> down the field. And so so funny. I'm taking credit. That's great. And next to him is Moon Mullins, who is the tackle. Right. Well, if I don't, if I don't uh, let Tony Klein, if I don't back up deep, Tony Klein made a move on me and got outside and chased. Right? So if it wasn't for me, right, then uh, I don't even know um, who else took credit. Uh, well, French Everybody. sure did. Right. Franco, All Franco was guys. the last up, but Andy Russell was playing defense. Oh, he took credit because he let Snake. Run around the end to go in the end zone, right? To get for let us get the lead. So everybody took credit. So funny. But uh, Frank, Frank was like, Yeah, 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 yeah it was all me. So, <laughs> so we have a lot of fun with that play. Yeah, that's good. And Amazing. you know, it's, it's pretty cool that it was the number one play of, of all time, they right. say. So I'm involved. It's amazing. It's yeah, it's great. It's great. A lot did, of fun. Did you see us all on the edge of our seat when he was telling the story? Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. Tell us, tell us more. We were like, yes. <laughs> was Bradshaw there for that? Of course he was. Well, right? he was the quarter. He threw the oh. ball. No, I know, but at this oh, event, for... he doesn't come in. Oh, he doesn't. No, him and him and uh, Chuck Noel had a problem. You know, well, Chuck's and... passed away, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Noel, yeah, but he was alive last year. He's alive for that. Yeah, but yeah. Um, he just doesn't. You know, he doesn't. Plus, do it, was, it was during the NFL season. He was yeah. probably working too. Yeah, of course. 
Um, I, I have a question that I that I, I don't know how to ask the question, and we, we kind of talked about this, Chris, earlier today. It's because um, my initial question was, I don't because you were a linebacker. Out of all the running backs that you had to go up against, I was just gonna uh, ask this. Yeah. Oh, you were yeah, no, my, that's fine. Good. I don't know how to ask it though, because there's two ways to ask it. One is like, who was the you know the hard like who did who was the hardest running back to tackle? But I don't think that's really the question I want to ask. I think I want to ask when you're sitting back there as a linebacker before a play. And there's a running back opposed to you. Which one makes you go in your head? Oh shit! I have to tackle him again. Well, the, you know what I mean. The bat, yeah. There, there's there's a couple varieties in the NFL. There's the scamper guys, the real right. quick guys. Mm-hmm. Terry Metcalf, Clarence Davis. You know these guys, or they're tough to tackle because you can't get them. Right. When you get them, they're, it's easy. Right. And then there's the there's that middle sized guy, that's got power and and bigness like. O.J. Simpson. Yeah. When O.J. Simpson was back there, it was a different world. And you know he's getting the ball every other play or every play. And he's the best there is. He's quick as a cat and big. And then Franco Harris is in that category. Right. Franco Harris always and, came across like a bulldozer to me. Like yeah. Like just plowing yeah, through, right? But, yeah, but no, Franco actually had moves, so moves yeah. and speed. You know, Eric Dickerson's that, that, that style. O.J. Anderson was that style. Right. But then there's the other ones. The Larry Zonkas. I'm waiting for this name. And the John drop. Riggins. Say it. Say the name. Les Josephson. No, say it. Say it. <laughs> did you uh, did you play against Houston Oiler? Oh, Earl Campbell. Did you play? Earl, absolutely. Earl Campbell was. Earl actually fit in the quicker category. Really? He was quick. The thing that sticks but in my hurt, mind. But he, but he ran so hard. He was probably one of the, you know, maybe the, be, I would have to say O.J. Simpson. And him really the, the, top the two? best running different, backs different levels yeah Hard, I yeah. mean I remember Earl Campbell yeah. them grabbing his jersey and him continuing to run and the, the jersey jerseys. ripping off yeah just disintegrating like, he's so strong so strong man yeah and you know so that's the guy so we talk about you know I don't think we ever were in a game where it mattered against the Bills right. but we were in a lot of games that mattered against the Dolphins okay and you knew Zonka was going to get that ball. And that hurt. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he was that hurt. hurt. Really, oh, that hurt so big time. Is he the hardest uh, running running back? The hardest. Well, you, to hit? You, yeah, you 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 want you, me to tell you the guy that I looking in that yeah. backfield don't want to see. Yeah, it's him, Larry Zonka. One, one bar across oh, his face, and then, one bar like a punter, and, and that right? hook thing that yeah. came down, that big <laughs> nose. Oh man, he's a monster, huh? Great, great, great player. And, and I think I saw in your highlight reel that you you had the uh, I want to say like privilege, like you got to tackle uh, Walter Payton. Oh yeah, yeah. Now Walter Payton was another one. I mean, I, why didn't I say him? Right. Try to catch him. I was. He's a scam- you know, he's a he scamperer, was, right? He was like a bigger scamperer. Right. He was as quick as those. And, and someone like Barry Sanders. Yeah. I, we played in Detroit one time. A cut. I couldn't believe the guy. The guy yeah. stood on his feet. You know. Yeah. It's crazy. They're very very interesting athletes in the NFL. You know, and they're very great players, and they're a lot of fun. A lot of fun to go up against. And if you're an All Pro. You want to go against the all pros. Sure. So you want to say, okay, my tackling's better than your running. Let's see. You know, that, yeah, that, yeah. I used to like to do that. Do you ever hit anybody and and uh, and just go, holy, you know, holy shit? I don't, have, <laughs> yeah. I don't know how else to put yeah. it. Just yeah. like whether, whether, whether you were on whether you were on that side or they were on that side, like Ooh. holy shit, like a, that was a hit. You know, a lot of times you, you know, you're, you're on the bottom of the pile or yeah. you're still attached to the guy. And you're just feeling your body to see if everything feels good. Yeah. yeah. But I like, I like, you know, I, I used to love it. And I, and I did a lot of football camps in my days, and I teach a lot of tackling. And when you make a perfect tackle, it's so easy. And I, I almost say the running backs enjoy it too. Yeah. Because they go down. All of, it's almost like when you rope right. the cow, you know, yeah. the calf. And and it's just zoom zoom, it's sure. just zoom done fluid kind of. Right? That's a good feeling. I feel yeah. like you had a really distinctive style of of, of tackling where you uh, just doing research on you, you know, watching your your game footage again, where you would just scoop guys up and kind of just throw them. Right, man. <laughs> right. I saw that a lot but, of times. Uh, right, but that's got like you're saying that's got to be easier on the on the offensive player because you're not. It's not that you know you're not driving them into the earth, although you did that as well by their face, scrotum, neck, head, and chest area. <laughs> but sometimes you just scoop them up and throw them, right? Yeah. Well, you know, it's uh, it's tackling the best, the best tackle 
is a nice shoulder into the knee area, mm -hmm. wrap them up, and you just go down because you got them. You take their you take their legs off the ground, so they're you know it's over. Right. You have no power once they're up in the air. That is good, but that only may happen <laughs> once every four or five games. Sure, sure. Because you can never you never, never know what part of your body. You know, I just used to throw it in there. Whatever happens, happened. But sometimes it was just perfect. And we played this one half against Kansas City one time where we went three and out every time. They must have had the ball like seven times. That's like pitching a perfect half. game. Yeah. Right? It, it was unbelievable. Then in the second half, we couldn't get off the field. <laughs> it was like nuts. I was like, what happened to us? Yeah. It was crazy, but I'll never forget going in the locker room. And I'm like, holy shit, guys, look what we did. You know, yeah. Yeah. We, were, we were perfect. Yeah. Three and out every time. So what do you think contributed to that that turn in momentum and that something well, getting in your head? Like, how did you lose that? You you know, it's they 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 may have, they, well, you know, that's good coaching. Yeah. Halftime, you watch what happens. Yeah. The Raiders, they did it again Sunday up at the Jets. They lost about five or six games at the end of the year last year. They got playing a little bit better in the second half. If you get ahead. Your coach has got to make adjustments, you too. Gotta adjust, yeah. yeah. But what happens, it always seems like the, the team that's losing makes the most adjustments. adjustments. But it's not the way it should be. You know, mm -hmm. always, you know, you should always come out with a little something different. And the Raiders uh, can't, can't do it. So I, you know, what you're going to say, the chief coaches, whatever they did, they did it right because we all of a sudden you can't stop them. Yeah. Because yeah. they, they got one dinky play and one, and yeah. all of a sudden, similar to what happened in the Steelers last night, those two plays is broke them. Yeah. yeah. And that was only in the second quarter. It's just demoralizing, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and in the NFL, you know, I, 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 you know, I got a son right now who's playing football at Brown University. I mean, you know, we talk a lot about, you know, quarterbacking and because he's a quarterback and uh, seeing the field. And I said, I told my son, now, how does. People could do this. I don't know because I'm not a quarterback. But if you ever miss a coverage in the NFL, the ball's there. It's um, it's 100. percent The quarterbacks can see that field, yeah. They, yeah. and it's just amazing how they can see it. And then that ball is there, and you go, "Oh God!" You know, never mm -hmm. do they not get it there. <laughs> it's just like right, yeah. you know, it's coming. Yeah. You slip, you know, it's coming. Yeah. You know, you you you, you scrub your coverage, your coverage you know, it's coming. There's no room for error. At, no room at, for at error at that level. And that's and you know and that's the way the Raiders like to play it. We used to play, you know, um, you know, mistake-free football. Even though it was wild and crazy, it was pretty much mistake-free. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. It's funny. I, I'm hearing him talk about all these glory days and people who you respected, but I really want to know about an arch enemy or an arch rival or someone you like when you got on the field. Like you almost had hate for them. An individual or a team. An individual Either or one. a team. Well, the. A lot of ch times, you know, the teams, you hated them. I hated the Chiefs. Right. I hated the Steelers. I hated the Dolphins. Because of the way they played? Because of the way their management well, handled mostly the game? Or? I, the, the Dolphins, because Don Shula was on the competition committee, and every, all the referees were kissing his ass, and every yeah. flag went against us. Yeah, now we charge okay. like $100 for a stick. Yeah. The, <laughs> the Steelers, the Steelers, I was, I, I mean, they were just played tough football. And we just knew that was going to be a tough game. And then, like the Chiefs, they were as dirty and rotten as we were. So that was always a, a fun game. And we knew it was going to be nasty. And you loved those games. And you played them but, twice a year, right? Yeah. You yeah. love those games, but you hate those guys. Oh, because, yeah. Because yeah. you saw yourself yeah. in them. Oh, yeah. Just, it was beautiful. <laughs> but the, the fun games for me were when I had, like, a Russ Francis from the Patriots. He, when you come out and you go against an all-pro, yeah. And you, the, uh, uh, above and beyond, you know, a guy that you knew was uh, really bona fide. Then you get fired up for the individual. I used to like, I hated everybody, every team, but I used to like to hate individuals. <laughs> when, <laughs> with, yeah. with, with Riley Odoms from the um, from the uh, Broncos, big all pro. I made him quit so many times. I just yeah. stuck my hands in his face. And I love his it. Throat. <laughs> was he as a center guard? Yeah, what was I wanted to hear. Tight end. Tight oh, end. tight end. So my big things was that I always had played against the tight right. ends. Then his kid, uh, Jimmy Mitchell from Atlanta. Ah, oh, a maniac. And I just knew, we, we, you know, we were going to get some land. Ace is going to be nasty, so you get yourself fired up. Bob Trumpy from Cincinnati, another nasty guy. 
I still didn't love to play against him. You know, and yet at the end of the game, it was sure. it was cool. But my my number one guy I hated was <laughs> love this. was Ted Koala. Can I name my next? <laughs> <laughs> <Go ahead. Okay. laughs> so we play we play against the 49ers and Ted and now that's just I, I I shouldn't even hate the guy. They were in the NFC. We don't even play him that right, much. Right. But every last preseason game, every year it was against the 49ers. Of course, Bay Rivalry. Right. And Blanda and not Blanda, Banizak and Blanda a little bit told me that they have a you know an all pro tight end. Phil, you can't let this guy off the line of scrimmage. And we started working me earlier in the week, and by game day, I couldn't wait to get out there. <laughs> I didn't know who this guy was. But what I did to this poor guy, (laughs) we didn't even last. We didn't even last three plays. We're some bam, 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 bam. And then the next year, bam, we did it. We're out of that game. Madden went crazy on Banizak because, you know, he made me get involved. And then the next year, we we did it again. And then the next year, we did it again. And then the fourth year, we're back over in San Francisco. And there was a – from right up from Perth, then, boy, Bruce Harper is running – no. Not Bruce. What's his name? Bruce <laughs> Taylor from Perth <laughs> Danbury High School, running a reverse, and I'm going this way, and then I go back this way, and Russ and uh, Ted Kowalik, whop, hits me in the face, blood everywhere, <laughs> oh. everywhere, and then because I promised I wasn't getting thrown out of this game, that ended it. We went now, berserk. Is there a point though where the two of you guys, like before a game, kind of wink at each other, and you're like, no, oh, no, 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 like no, it's no, professional no, wrestling no, or something? No, yeah. yeah, no, no, no. But he ended up being Raider. Oh, right. Uh, he's, uh, right little, oh, oh, he's my buddy now. Oh, that's great. <laughs> I got another one, uh, Mike Ditka. Oh, so, uh, Bears? We're, yeah, I'm playing. The there. Bears. The Bears. <laughs> yeah, I'm in a plane in the college all star game. So we're up in. Uh, right, because he, he was a tight end, right? Yeah. A, yeah, so we're, we're, we're going to play against the Baltimore Colts because they're the Super Bowl champs. But two weeks into this thing, you go scrimmage the Bears. And here I am, a little rookie, and Ditka. You know, decided to, you know, whop. And he was a he was a big it. dude, oh, right? Man. Yeah. You know, it's you know, we're we're, we're like he played play. offense like you played defense. Man, right? Very was, similar style, right? It was pretty good. Yeah. Pretty tough. <laughs> but oh, man. You know, he gets traded to the Cowboys about his eighth year, about my eighth year in the league when I'm the big guy. And he's about his twelfth year in the league. And I got him back. What a day! I was, whoa, 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 right in, right on him. I was all over him. The referee was, uh, had a post. It's, you guys got to stop this stuff. I couldn't stop because he, I, I didn't forget, you know. Yeah. So it's it's fun, you know. But hey, those but, are. But we all, you know, to this day, if I see my dick, we're, we're buddies. Yeah, right. Right. He knew I was coming after him, and, he, sure. and, I, and I knew he was coming after me. But that, that was the NFL in those days. That's great. You know, it's good stuff. It's like Ali and Foreman, right? It's like yeah. This, yeah. That's what makes the ring it, together. Yeah. And you get yeah. it. It's a shared struggle. That's yeah. what makes it leave the yeah. league, right? Totally. Yep. You got you gotta love you gotta love when two competitors are competing. You know, look at look at even even the golfers that are out there, you know. Yeah. You see McElroy, okay, and Bubble, you know, Watson and you know, let let them compete, man. It's fun. Mm-hmm. Anything, you know, it's good sport. Oh, I love it. Uh, see, so you got yeah, go ahead. I was I was gonna say what is a what is a Dicka without a Villa Piano you know, uh, right. what is a Foreman without Ali? It's like it doesn't exist. It's like we we're talking yeah. about True Detective, right? It's like Woody Harrelson needs to have you have Matthew to have. I'm a fan. Needs a Polana. Yeah, totally, <laughs> exactly. You need no, a, he doesn't. <laughs> you're, the, you're the opposite sides of a coin, right? Yeah, yeah. The yin and the yang. So yeah. you got you got this long, amazing, illustrious career. Is there a game or a play that you can basically distill all that greatness down to and say, that is what my career was right there? It's the greatest moment I've ever had on the field or in the sport. Is there something that comes to mind? Yeah, there is. And this is when I went to the Bills, okay? Now, the Raiders. I started out, I was afraid of my own shadow. I didn't. I started every single game. I had no clue what I was doing half the time. But I, I got through it. I got pretty good, and everything was great. So I go to Buffalo, and even though Chuck Mox told me, you're not going to be a starter, he said, but be ready. So we're playing the 49ers. We got to beat the 49ers, Joe Montana's rookie year, and we're out there in the mud, pouring down rain. The middle linebacker breaks his hand like the first play, and the, the, the linebacker coach sends in the backup middle linebacker, and Knox goes, ho, get little piano, get over here. Let's go. I said, Coach. It's, first of all, I said, Coach, I'm not, I'm not so sure about the singles. He goes, call your own game. 
and that was the head coach telling me to call me on games, right. which nice. is all I needed, wanted him to say. Yeah. Because this other guy was kind of a, a little too mechanical for me. And I, I didn't play it all the whole year. So when I go in and have a, a, a Villa Piano game, like a real game, I tackled everybody. <laughs> and it was wonderful. <laughs> and we beat, I love that. We beat them. And I called my father that night because my father told me, hang in there, Phil, hang in there, Phil. It's going to yeah. happen. It'll happen. And it happened in the biggest game of the year. And, uh, it was, and we, so we win. I mean, we had to win. Yeah. The New England had the same record as us, but we had beaten them. So we we were the AFC champs. That's great. Oh, that's that's, cool. I, that's awesome the story. quote of P- yeah. Pizza Beer Revolution's lifetime. The right. quote is, I tackled everybody. Right. Tackled everybody. <laughs> <laughs> right. I like that. That's awesome, man. That's when we have awesome. a great show, it's going to be a Villa Piano game. Yeah. Yeah. We tackled everybody during that. Uh, sp- speaking of games, man, we, uh, you want to play a little game with us? We play with all of our guests um, on all of our episodes. It's a, a little game we like to call Top or Bottom. Okay. What do you think? You want to give it a shot? I want to give it a shot. Mr. Blue, are you it. ready? Yeah. All right, so this is this is a game called Top or Bottom. I'm going to give you a this or that, a yin or a yang. I'm going to give you two topics. You're going to tell me if those two things were in a relationship, which one would be on the top, which one would be on the bottom. Now, okay. that's not a sexual reference. That's not a, a power struggle. It's just For some reason I got a feeling we're going that way, but that's okay. <laughs> in the mind of Phil Villapiano, right. which one's on top, which one's on bottom, and some of them we're going to jump in and give our opinions as, as well. Go ahead. You ready to go? Ready. Top or bottom? Uh, number one, sunny California or a New York state of mind? Ooh, I had them both in my life. <laughs> sunny California. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it never rains in California. <laughs> right? I lived in San Diego for a year, and it, it, he's right. It never rains. I, I have to say California as well. I, I love upstate New York, but you're San Diego. Come on. Yeah. What's better than San Diego? Yeah. Yeah. California is something right? special. I might a little be a little too uptight to go out west. Oh, you're going to say I New like, York? I love the New York area. I like the ability to be as rude as I want to be. Uh, <laughs> now, speaking of rude, that, that's officially 75%. Please don't talk into the microphone anymore for I'm this out. episode. <laughs> uh, number two, top or bottom. I'm talking rivalries here. Top or bottom, Denver Broncos or the Kansas City Chiefs? Oh, Kansas City Chiefs were definitely on the bottom because we hate them. Yeah. yeah like, <laughs> get them closer to hell. Oh. <laughs> oh, all right. Denver, Denver was easy. All right. So this one's just for you as well, Phil. Uh, number three, top or bottom? I think I know the answer, but Buffalo Bills or the Oakland Raiders? Uh, hey, you know, you can only be a rookie once, and, and, and that's when I'm, I was on top. You're making Super Bowls, and you, you know, Pro Bowls, Super Bowl, you're on top. Raiders. All right, I like it. Number four, we're going to round table this one. Top or bottom? We'll start with you, Phil. The longest yard or the North Dallas 40? Ooh, North Dallas 40, pretty cool <laughs> book. My buddy John Matusak started in that, and I loved it. And, and Bolitnikov told Nolte how to run the patterns. That was a lot of fun to watch. Yeah. I think it was so real. Yeah. Oh, all right. So real. On top. All right, so I, I have to go with the longest yard, Me man. Me too. I'm sorry, but not the new one. The old one. The, the old one Burt Reynolds. Reynolds. Have to, right? And there were a number of NFL players in that movie. Sure. Ben original. Davidson was a big time in that movie, and there was a few guys. I forget now, but who definitely was the, ben. Who was the guy in Blazing Saddles? The f- oh, oh, Alex right. Karras? He punches oh, the yeah. horse. Remember Alex him? Alex Karras. So played with him? Scene. Football guy. Right? Alex, Alex played with, uh, uh, yes, we overlapped, but he was defense for the Lions, so oh, I was okay. never going up against him. Longest yard. What do you think? Uh, I'd go with North Dallas 40. Yeah. It was the first time I ever saw football as real. You know, it yeah. was the first movie. Yeah. I'm like, wow, these guys are really in it. It yeah. was really real. And the guys from the Raiders, um, Blitnikov and Medusek, went and did that. They, the the producers, the directors, they were asking them, how do we do this scene? So those scenes were as real as you can get. And we saw that movie. We went down to play the Rams, and it previewed the night. They, they, we had a private screening. And we all were like, holy shit. Oh, yeah. That's, that's the that's, real deal. That's the real deal? <laughs> yep. Oh, so I, it, had, it just ca- ca- cataloged all the debauchery that was going on at the time, right? Because the there's no like, right? the, the guy's going to need or sticking yeah. the needles in right. the That's a scene I remember. Oh, God. And wasn't Burt Reynolds in Longest Yard? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm not a Burt Reynolds. Oh, player. you're not? <laughs> no. Burt played. That he mustache played, did better acting than he did. <laughs> he played ball, though, didn't he? Uh, he played college ball. I think he played a Florida State. Was, didn't he? Yeah, I think it was pretty, right. he was pretty decent. Yeah. He didn't go pro. so. Um, I, I want to get off topic for one second. What, let's keep that music pumping. Though, but what was the best football movie that of all time? The best football movie of all time. 
Well, I'm going to go with North Dallas 40. Oh. Yeah, you're just I that? absolutely loved it. What yeah. was that? Newt Rockney? What was that big one with the speech and all that? Is it called Newt Rockney? You know, like the, the quintessential football movie? Like he's. No? Is, it, is it the movie where the coach comes into the locker room at halftime and goes, guys, this is that moment in the big game where the coach comes into the locker room and says that really important thing, and then you go out and you do what you can to win it? <laughs> that movie? Oh, I would like it. Uh, that, sounds, that sounds like a good one, though. <laughs> Joe, what's your favorite mm-hmm. football movie of all What's time? the one they made the TV series out of just recently? Oh, Friday Night Lights. Uh, Friday Night Lights was great because it really showed good. how over-obsessive like, yeah. Texas was about sure. their whole football thing and how important it was in everybody's lives there and the pressure behind it. I mean, amazing. And what about... What about Blue Mountain Blue State? Blue Mountain State. I was just going to say <laughs> I that. I never saw that it. Way, uh, a guy that played pro ball was, yeah. is the coach. What Did you uh, play uh, with him? Uh, he, uh, was no, no. Ra- he was a Raider? Uh, or a Jet? Best, you know, he was a, uh, a Viking to the Jets, yeah. to the Seahawks, to Hollywood. And he's the coach of Blue Mountain yeah. State. Have you guys seen Blue Mountain no. State? No. It is the best two seasons of television that have ever no, been out kidding. for football. And they're making it into a movie because yeah, it are. was so... So ris- risque, if you really? will. Gotta check TV. this out. That's is that why it's blue? It's, like, on- it's blue, it's dirty? Listen to me, man. We, we watched check it out. opening night, my wife and I. That was it. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, really? It, my it, son has watched every episode. Yeah, yeah. it's all, it's a co- comedic genius, <laughs> man. That's great. All right, last one, top or bottom. We're going to roundtable this one and hopefully talk about it a little bit. And we'll start with you. Uh, top or bottom, the NFL in 2014 or the NFL circa 1970? Ooh, uh, you know I, 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 you know I, I'm, I'm a product of the '70s. I love it. I love it. But you know the NFL is the biggest thing in the world right, right. now. Yeah. I love to be. I love a uh, part of me loves that we built, put the foundation down for this unbelievable monster that it is now. So right. I, I like today. On top. Wow. wow. I, I, I got to be honest. I, I totally didn't expect that, man. Yeah, I didn't I, either. I, I, I'm proud of the NFL. I love the way you put it, too. You know, you were part of building it. And I feel I was born in 75. So, you know, watching football with my father and growing up with my friends, like I feel like circa 70s is uh, it was more my yeah. my NFL than today's NFL. I, I'm uh, I'm a little turned off by today's NFL for a lot yeah. of reasons that we talked about today. Well, I just I think of the 70s and being a kid and, and HBO coming on. They'd had these like football shows and they had this great music behind them, and you'd see the guys coming up to the line with the breath coming out. The monsters and they in just, the midway. It just had this, it had this <laughs> mystique, awesome. right? Yeah. yeah. It just had this lore to it. The and frozen it, tundra. Totally. Lambo Exactly. <laughs> it was otherworldly, right? Yeah. And today, to me, it's too commercialized, it's too packaged, it's too polished, if you will. It doesn't do it for me anymore. It felt it felt genuine, like I yeah. said earlier, in the yeah. 70s. Definitely 70s when men were men, in my opinion. Right. right. So I'm, I can't believe I'm the only one the other way. I went yeah. the other way. But, I mean, I can't even, I can't even imagine the Raiders are going to go to London and play this year. I mean, that's big. Yeah. yeah. And these people, I mean, I've been in Europe a million times. They love the NFL. They get yeah. a great oh, yeah. turnout. They go to Japan and play. This is becoming a worldly game. I just kind of like what it's become. Yeah. I, but... I guess I'd have to like to play in those days better. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I like the bigness. Um, to to kind of go off of that, and this kind of just dawned on me now, and I don't really know how you'll feel about this question or where this question really fits in, but when you're talking about the building of this empire of the NFL and you were a part of it and all the guys you played with were a part of it, what part of that building did NFL films and Steve Sable really – take because the things that chris and i just started spitballing back yeah and you hear me saying the frozen tundra of lambeau field and these are things we grew up with as kids propaganda of that right so i mean essentially steve sable was the propaganda minister of the nfl right i mean like what do you think about that do you think that i think i think nfl filmsman was fantastic i think howard cosell was fantastic I think instant replay was fantastic. I think Monday Night Football was fantastic, and it all had to work together, you know. But um, I, you know, it, 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 I couldn't wait to get the highlight film and go over here to Weber's Bar right near in Allenhurst. Right. And, and I had the whole my whole Asbury Park High School waiting for an Ocean Township High School waiting for that me to come home with the film. Wow. Because I mean that was made by NFL Films, right? And Holy. they couldn't wait to hear for send that yeah. do his thing. It was great. He had tons to do yeah. with building that league, and so did his son. Yeah, that's pretty great. Um, awesome. I have a, uh, a couple um, social media questions. We put out to our, our listeners of Pizza Beer Revolution earlier today that you're going to be on. 
and uh, we asked them if they had a question. Any question to ask Bill Villapiano, what would it be? Uh, how do you feel about answering a few of those? Let's go. All right. The first one is from a friend of mine, uh, a friend of ours, uh, Ali Conley. He does a uh, he's a U. It's called UK NFL End Zone. So he does a, a NFL show from from the UK. Wow. Uh, and he asks uh, if you had to have one. He, he essentially asks the top or the bottom. Um, if you could have had and you had one of the two, right? If you could have had a Super Bowl or a Hall of Fame, you get, you could have had one or the other. Which one would be on top? Which one would be on the bottom? What an unbelievable question. Mm -hmm. I was with about 10 Hall of Famers the other day that didn't have a Super Bowl ring. Right. And they're dying for oh, a Super Bowl yeah. ring. You got that ring, yeah. right? I got I, you, you know what? This is what it's all about. I mean, you and know. And you still can have the Hall of Fame, yeah, right? Yeah. You can have them both. And, right. and you know, I, I saw Andre Reid, and uh, him and I talked about it. No Super Bowl, oh. uh, but he's got a Hall of Fame. Wow. You know? Interesting. And, uh, there's a lot of guys like that. Well, yeah. uh, how about Jim Kelly? Jim Kelly, right? Yeah, like four yeah. time, four Super Bowls in a row, all losses. Yeah, you know. Like, well, yeah. well man, right. man, man told right. us the day of the game. This was his pep talk, and this is and John usually was pretty good at pep talks, but he when when he got us all together to take a knee, you know, in your own way, he said, everybody did a little prayer. And he said, this will be the biggest single event in any of your lives as long as you win <laughs> <laughs> let's go and that was it uh, that's great i was like coach i need more you that's know, great we got no more speaking of, speaking of john Lyon, the next question from come uh comes from big jim sports a friend of our his name's jim niece from big jim sports he does a radio show he said uh what is the best john madden story that you have Oh, if you're willing to share that, who knows what? Uh, the coach was just so he was so beautiful, and we we loved him. I, I got I got a really really one that just hit me. We're um we're flying to play the Steelers in in the championship game, and as the year went on, John used to get bigger and bigger, <laughs> and he probably was three something at this time, and um he had to take medicine because we all know he doesn't like to fly. So it was obvious that John took a little too much medicine that day. <laughs> and he used to get up and walk down the aisles and just walk on the airplane. But this day... Oh, so you flew with him? Oh, yeah. Because did he take to. buses all the time? Oh, not, not in those days. You, you had to practice in Oakland, then you're in the air. You got to go play. So John would have to get on board. He'd be in to medicate him. But this day, he already thought we played the game and we were... Going to the game. I know what that's like. And John, <laughs> great game, Phil. I mean, Mike, way to, way to throw that one. Everybody's like, what? <laughs> we love them now. Oh. Coach just over medicated. That's awesome. Oh, that's great. I don't have so much a question as I do a trivia question for you, gentlemen. Okay. Are you aware that Even me? Phil Villapiano has a connection to the movie um, That Thing You Do? Do you know that movie, That, <laughs> that Thing You Do? Yeah. Thing you Tom do. Hanks? You look great in the jackets and the, the glasses. Exactly. <laughs> Are you aware of the connection? No. No. No idea. Tom Hanks is an Oakland Raiders fan. Okay. He named the pizza place in that movie, Out by the Airport, where the band is the house band, Villa Pianos. Oh, cool. After this gentleman right oh, here. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's man. great. Cool. And my daughter, Andrea, was the one who... Found out about that, <laughs> Dad. Do you want? Do you know that Tom Hanks named it? Yeah, because he he put it out there somewhere, and that was pretty. Have, cool. have you met him? I've never met Tom Hanks, but I I, I should. I want to. When you meet him, can you Call do me a favor, out, Tom Hanks? Can you yeah, just right? can you scoop him up, grab his legs, and just throw him over your shoulder? Uh, <laughs> I don't yeah. maybe I'm, I don't know if I'm, I maybe I'm too old for that. Yeah. But I, I, I get him on your show. That would be cool. Yeah, that'd be, be cool. You guys at the beer and pizza with Tom Hanks, <laughs> who. If there's there's been a lot of great documentaries about the Raiders over the years, and one of them was all about Tom Hanks did it, and I think that oh was, really yeah he was he was like the, the, one of the main guys that okay talked, and I think that was the um, it was an HBO one it was really good yeah I think it was when the uh, the Raiders and the A's and the Hell's Angels oh, wow. and the Black Panthers all going on at the same Jeez. time great mo get that one wow. it's HBO. I'll check it's that out really good. And it, and it was, I can't remember the name of it, but it's very, very good. And Tom, I think, was in there, you know, kind of straightening everybody out. You know, it was pretty Interesting. good. Interesting. That's cool. 
Oh, that fact came by way of my uh, a friend, Eric Ackway, by the way. Thank you for that very interesting tidbit. That's you got cool. another one? Yeah, I do. Uh, Mark Lane, the real, uh, the real Mark Lane, he asks, uh, do you still hate the Steelers? And uh, how do you feel about Stabler not being in the Hall of Fame? Well, do we still hate the Steelers? I, I think the Steelers, you know, as, as you get older, it's like, you know, you get divorced and you, you forget why you got divorced. Right. Yeah. yeah. There was a lot of hatred in those right. days, but now it's kind of cool to be with those guys. Yeah. And I, I really enjoy, you know, being with the Steelers guys. And I really enjoy doing business in Pittsburgh because they all don't remember yeah, my yeah, name. Yeah. <laughs> right. like I'm in Oakland, you know, because yeah. that's how much distinct the fans put into it, too. They sure. hated the players. So, yeah, they're, uh, I, you know that that's pretty much gone, but the uh, for Kenny being in the in, in the uh, Hall of Fame, he's got all the stats, he's done everything you need to do. Right. But why he's not in there? There's a few. There's a few Raiders that probably should be in there, but they, they you know, it's it's political. It yeah. can't not be political. I mean, sometimes if people get in, I don't even know who they are, you know. But. Right. Yeah, I, th- I'm, I I think Snake should definitely be in the Hall of Fame. Well, maybe maybe soon, right? I mean, it's, Could be. it's never too late. Yeah, it's um, the old guy division. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, and and we have one we have one more out there. Lisa Varga uh, at the Lisa Varga. She's a good friend of the show. Uh, she wants us to ask about uh, ask you about your philanthropic uh, uh, efforts. I can never say that word ever. Philanthropic. Uh, she wanted me to ask you about the Jimmy V. Don't Ever Give Up Award. Oh, that was that was a, that was a pretty good one, and that was. Uh, but I, that, that story is a long one. But I, um, what I did, and this is this is this is nuts. This is, is this really the nuts. is this the ring story? Yeah, when I, I, uh, I, I okay, I, I um, nine eleven, right? The United States, they you know we're all in mourning. We we just couldn't believe what happened to us. Next week, there's no football. Following week, by just by chance, I had a I rented a suite. Out in Oakland, I brought all these customers in. We're having a ball. There was a flyover before the game. Again, it beats Flutie at 44 to 41, something like that. Crazy game. Raiders win. They knock it on the door of the suite. Phil, it's 7 o'clock. You got to go. So we walk into the parking lot. The guy says, uh, uh, one of my guys says, Phil, we need another beer. I says, okay, no problem. We see some tailgaters go over there and, and uh, walk up and they pretty much like, you know, they knew who I was. Phil, 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 oh my God, yeah. So they pulled out the beers. Guy's sitting in a wheelchair. To make a long story short, I I decided to call him out and, and uh, tell him that, you know, you'd never severed your spinal cord so you can walk again if you only act like a raider. You got all the raider crap on. You know, let's go. And uh, the guy, he had two beautiful daughters next to him, and he goes, I said, do it for your daughters. And the guy says, I will. Little did I know. Well, then then what I did was I took my Super Bowl ring. I said, give me your hand. The same ring you have on right now. Same ring. I gave this to this guy, and I said, give this back to me when you can walk. And he starts crying. And his daughter wow. and, the, and the wife says, you can't do this. You can't do this. You won't do it. And I and he had one of his buddies there. And I said, will he do it? He says, he'll do it. I said, will you be the coach? He goes, I'll be the coach. And now we had a coach and a, and a player, and the guy did it. And they, so you take the September. ring off your finger. Yeah. You give it to this guy. And you tell him, when you can walk, you'll, you'll walk that ring back to me. Exactly. And how long, how long later? This is really nuts. We do, I do Conrad Dobler, Tony Hill, and myself do a party at the Silver Legacy in Reno every year. He calls me around December. He says, Phil, I can do it by the Super Bowl. I said, get out. You can't do it. I said, don't do this if you're not ready. That was December. Then January came. He says, I could do it. We got one more month to go. I can do it. So the guy comes up to Reno. He, did, he had a Howie Long jersey on mm-hmm. that day. I met him. Now he's got the 41 on. Comes in in a wheelchair. And we, you know, we get about, you know, 700 people, 800 people in this big theater. And we're up on the stage. And now the it had been leaked out. So the, all the networks are there. And uh, the... Uh, a couple of my friends picked him up, put him up on stage with a couple of little crutches, and he started shaking and shaking and shaking, and he moved his foot. The place went nuts. Then he started shaking and shaking again, and he moved his other foot. And I was, like, way over there, and then I started coming closer to him, and then he takes his crutches and throws him down, and he's almost falling, and up. he's going like this. And he gave him a little cane, and he shook and shook and shook, and I'm talking 45 seconds between, and he moved his foot. 
And then we just hugged and, and you know, it, it was just incredible. That's amazing. He, it, was, it was unbelievable. He walked. We, we got the most inspirational award from Oprah Winfrey, hmm. right? And then we got the Jimmy V Award, which was so cool. I, I couldn't believe it. They called me up and said, Phil. Let's go. Tell me the story. Is this true? And uh, they gave me the. I got it at home. And you made it happen. That's anything. unbelievable. Yeah. That's so anyway, awesome. hey, I would have. Oh, so I never told my mother, right? <laughs> because she's ninety-four years old at the time. And the next morning, and uh, so I never told her that I gave my ring away. So now she's watching the Super Bowl from New Jersey, and and it's, no, she, the next morning, Good Morning America, she, and the lady says, "You're not going to believe what this Oakland Raiders done." My mother, Oakland Raiders, so she can't wait. They come back from the commercial. It's me. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's funny. They did it on the TV. My mother called me. She was crying. Oh, so that, it turned out. It turned out really cool. That's, that's unbelievable, awesome. yeah, man. Same story, man. That is some, such a great. Sometimes story. you do some goofy things. And, and, hey, but I got and, my ring back, and it paid yeah. off. <laughs> and have you? Are you still in contact with him? Yeah, his name's Mitch Ulrich. He lives out in um, Lem Pleasanton, right where Madden lives. In, okay, uh, a good guy. Oh, that's and awesome. That can't really walk, but can. He's, yeah, okay, yeah. he's okay with crutches. Out of the wheelchair. That's great. Awesome. That's big time. Inspiration. Cool. Um, all right. So, again, thank you so much for coming out. And, and that sound indicates really what this show is all about. And it's about the revolution of what we talk about, our guests. Cool. And uh, the revolution here is, is really the NFL. So if we were to play a game called the Armchair Futurist, essentially, you know, you're playing armchair quarterback. In the year 2050, what does the NFL look like? You know what I mean? I know that's far away, Ooh. 2050 from now. It's 2014. <laughs> but what do you think the NFL really looks like then? Oh, I don't know. What do you, the guys will be 400 pounds, maybe. <laughs> maybe they'll be running like lightning, you know. Uh, there'll be flames coming out behind them. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Okay, maybe we'll have some, you know, drones up there firing <laughs> down, knocking wide receivers. <laughs> you know, Shooting down the ball, yeah, right? They, yeah, they got to yeah, knock up. Yeah, it's some new things. You then Joe Maffei will be a yeah. fan, right? You got Absolutely. <laughs> right? <laughs> some robot little, players. A little Star, Star Wars looking thing, right? Yeah. So, who knows? I just hope the NFL's around in 2050 for my grandsons and all that stuff to get out there and play. Right. It really, it really uh, is a great institution to uh, to to bring family around. Oh yeah, you know, I hope they they keep the NFL keeps that in mind going forward with things we talked about earlier. You know, and it, like yeah. that's where how we grew up. You know, you and I, Chris, our our fathers and brothers coached us, right? And uh, it was uh, like a lot about family and like the stories you're telling are all about family. And that to me, that's what the NFL was really all about. And I just hope that it maintains that. Well, so you do know? I. So do I. And you know, we've had a little problem this week with the. Ray Rice and the the you know, get rid of these thugs, get right. rid of these guys. It, I mean, it's a privilege to wear right. an NFL uniform. Right. And if you don't have if you don't think it's a privilege, watch Ray Rice scramble now. Mm -hmm. That he's out. Right. Yeah. You know, it's you, everybody will learn. I love Plexico Barrows had to learn. Right. You know, and, and uh, there's been a bunch of them. You know, Michael Vick, look how he's learned, even though I'm I'm Giant lover of dogs. That, that one mm -hmm. killed me. They all kill me when that one. Right. You can't, you know, go and love this game and, and right. love what you're doing. You don't got to be a thug, you know. Do nice things. Right. You know, you know, go run naked somewhere, you know. <laughs> I, I yeah. shoot somebody. You know? uh, I agree. Yeah. Anybody who defames yeah. the game, you yeah. know. Yeah. Exactly. I'm so glad you brought it up. I wasn't going to bring it up because I didn't want to. You had such a good time and I didn't want to bring it down. Not that we are, but uh, it's interesting to hear your perspective on it, you know, because we had a kind of discussion on our previous recording about it and uh yeah. it's nice to hear your input well you know i love this game and, and i think it's a privilege and i and i and i don't want all the people that did all that hard work right and make it what you know got it to where it's now it's like the biggest game in the world right don't 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 have a few people ruin it so i guess what you're saying though is that a, a public personality like an nfl player is just as responsible for managing their private lives and the possibility of those behaviors getting out in the public as they do the behavior that's on the football exactly. field. In, in, exactly, and that's part of being in the NFL. Mm -hmm. Assume that responsibility or get out. It's, it's simple. I think I'd rather assume the responsibility right. than uh, you know, go be in the ghetto somewhere. You know. I think most people would, too. <laughs> oh yeah, clearly. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, they they got a black eye this week, but then you know by the end of the year, hopefully it'll all be rolling again and yeah. it'll it'll be looking good.
Soon they'll forget, right? Going back to Futurist, do you think there's going to be kind of like a, a, a movement? You know, all these rules are kind of tightening up the game and making it maybe less exciting and you know, causing some issues. Do you think there's going to be, I don't want to say like a Sandlot League that's going to emerge, but is there going to be some alternative platform, some venue that'll be... I think Kiss was hoping that. In the, in the, <laughs> sa- in the same way that, um, you know, cage fighting emerged sure. because boxing be- was becoming too... It's possible. I mean, you know I mean, it's it's clearly possible. I mean, it'll be a long. I mean, there are other leagues, but it'll be a long time coming before I think that happens. I mean, like all the things we talked about, the NFL means so much to so many people. It's yeah. gonna be kind of hard, right? I mean, that's right. And, and and you know, anything can fail, but these guys are shrewd, and you know, they'll they'll have rule changes and they'll they'll make the game better. They'll have designated hitters or right. or whatever they you know right. you know look at baseball. Yeah, they spruced it up. Yeah, you know, and uh, the, the NFL spruce it up too. They're smart. I, I, as fantastical as it sounds with the drones and all that stuff you mentioned, <laughs> I, I, I kind of believe you. I really think they're <laughs> not drones, the but Hunger I, Games, man. I think there's going to be robots. I really do. It. <laughs> I truly do. They're going to come up with a robot football league. I kid you not. And I'll be uh, on the side controlling it. And here's the deal: it can be as gruesome as you want it to be. You right. can just behead that other. Oh, remember that the, movie? What was yeah. that movie we had? The roller skaters. Oh, roller oh, ball. Roller ball. Oh, yeah. God, yeah. You know who's going to care about the robot? You know it's going to be yeah. the blood sport exactly. with robots. It'd be so great. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> totally cool, man. Thank. All right. Th- again, thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much for coming right. in. That was great. Thank, thank you very you much. much, Joe. Chris, you're the best. Whoa. 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 Let me hear that girl sing again. Yeah, it's coming right now. Yeah, Ippolito on the way out. Do you want to plug anything? Phil Villapiano. I'm plugging him. He's the best. There you go. Thanks, guys. A lot of fun. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. We'll let it We'll let it play out. Yeah, thank you, man. Revolution. Hit it. I hear it. There it is. Good stuff. All right, guys. We're going to take away. Sophisticated.